Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we are going to take a look at our final video in Unit 8 for AB, Topic 8.12, Example 3. And once again, despite the fact that the screen title says AP Calc BC, this is truly a Calculus AB topic and typically the last one that would be taught in the AB course. And what we're going to be doing here is talk about the washer method for finding the volume of a solid of revolution where again, the axis of revolution is going to be some vertical line other than the y-axis, which makes it probably among the toughest ones. And to add a little bit of extra rigor to this one, it's going to require a two integral setup. So let's take a look at our problem. We're going to find the volume of the solid formed by revolving once again the same region. So you're probably getting pretty used to this particular region because it is now the third example that utilizes the same set of equations. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in this enclosed region, right? This is the only region that is enclosed by all four of the graph y equal x squared plus one, the x-axis, which is y equals zero, the y-axis, which is x equals zero, and then that brown line x equal one. But again, the moment of truth is really figuring out what is that axis of revolution. And in this case, it is x equal to, which is a vertical line over here. So that's going to kind of change things up a little bit. And certainly it's going to invoke the washer method. As we talked about in previous videos, so much of this white space that's not shaded in, that separates the shaded region with the axis of revolution, is going to pretty much have washer method all over it. If you looked at the last video example too, you may have noticed that when we draw our uh, rectangles uh, that are representative of these of, of these disks that we're going to use, we always start them from the axis of revolution and we take them to the farthest boundary that we see in that shaded region. And that's going to be that Y axis. So this is going to be the capital R. However, you can see that that capital R is going to be a little something different. Maybe this is our first capital R, and the other capital R is going to look something like this. You see how it only goes as far as the parabola, and maybe that could be called capital R sub 2. So as we did earlier, we're going to have two completely different volumes that we're going to find. Volume 1 and volume 2, we'll call it. Now, as far as little r is concerned, we'll emanate that from the axis of revolution and go to the nearest boundary. And we can see that that's going to be the same regardless of if you're in the first shape or the second shape. And maybe I should call this first one here r1. I apologize for that. This would be r1. And then up here, let's write this so it's actually legible. We'll call that little r2. Okay, so if you want, you could go ahead and just spend a little bit of time finding out what those particular values are. So I'll find out what R1 is, and we would use our standard right minus left approach. Always want to use right minus left when you have a dy setup, and hopefully it's pretty obvious we have a dy setup because if you take your finger and thumb and if you do the finger and thumb test along your representative rectangles, you can see that the width is definitely a change in y. So right side minus left side would be a 2 minus 0. And there's your R1, capital R1, I should say. And while I've got the purple pen out, how about we do capital R2? Over here, right minus left, 2 minus a curve, a parabola that must be written in terms of y. And we do not have that just yet, right? We have y equal x squared plus 1. So like we did in example one from topic 8.12, we're going to solve this for x by subtracting one, by square rooting both sides of the equation, and then we have to think about this plus or minus sign, and I believe we are going to disregard the minus because the x is always positive when we're dealing with this quadrant one region. So with that, we'll just say that the r2 would be the right side, 2 minus the curve square root of y minus 1. All right, let's switch our colors and talk about little r1. 
right side minus left side is 2 minus 1, which of course is just 1. And then I don't think that little r2 is going to be any different. We still have right side minus left side to be a 1. Okay, now the stage is set to put together your volume. We know that the overall volume is going to be comprised of the volume of shape 1 plus the volume of shape 2. And so when we set up our volume of shape 1, we know that pi would be out in front and we would integrate. And then it's always going to be capital R squared minus little r squared. So we're talking about the R1s in this case. So capital R1 would be 2 squared. Little r1 would be 1 squared. And all of this would be integrated with respect to y. We look at our boundaries. Those must be y's as well. And we find out that the shape 1 is going to span all the way from 0 up to positive 1 for its boundaries. And fortunately, this is a pretty easy integral to tackle. We can go ahead and take 2 squared minus 1 squared, which is 4 minus 1, or 3. And if we integrate 3 with respect to y, we, of course, would get 3y. And then by the time we plug in our boundaries, 3 and 1, we would have 3 minus 0. Our boundaries from 1 to 0, we would get 3 minus 0. And that, of course, gives us a final volume of 3 times pi in that case. Now, volume 2 is going to be the one that's a little bit trickier. It's going to look a bit similar to example 1, though. So we're going to take pi times the integration, and we would use our capital R squared in region 2, which comprises of just a little bit more algebra. 2 minus the square root of y minus 1. All that would get squared, and then you'd subtract the quantity, and then you would take your distance for R2, which is just fortunately 1 squared, and take that with respect to y. Our boundaries of integration would start at 1, and they would go all the way up to 2 for that particular integral. Now, because of the complexity, again, like example 1 of particularly that first uh, set of parentheses here, we're going to segue over to the calculator, and we're actually going to integrate this with technology. So here we are, we're using our TI Inspire to do this. And when you enter this, you want to be very careful, make sure that your boundaries of integration are correct, and particularly pay very close attention to the usage of parentheses and make sure that the right things are being squared. So it looks like we have this set up correctly. We're going to hit enter and see what the result's going to be. And we have a five pi over six. So we'll return to our document, and we'll add that to our 3 pi that we got for volume of region 1. So that 5 pi over 6, which is the result from this particular calculation, leads us to say that v would be 3 pi plus our 5 pi over 6. And if we get a common denominator of 6, it looks like we have 18 pi plus 5 pi. And that would be 23 pi all over 6. That would be the volume of this very interesting shape that would be revolved around that axis of x equal 2. Well, not only does this conclude the video uh, for 8.12 example 3, but it actually does conclude the videos for all of Unit 8 in the AP Calculus AB curriculum and uh, coursing exam description. So at this point, it's just a matter of getting the practice in and then preparing long term for any assessment that might be coming up. I'm so glad you joined us and would like to see you at the next video.